Hi guys, my name is Anna and in this video I will tell you about social life in Kinshasa, the capital of Democratic Republic of the Congo, a country located in Central Africa. I lived and worked there for several months and I want to tell you about my experience, experience of my friends and also I will tell you in general what jobs foreigners do there because there are a lot of foreign people working in Kinshasa and experts of what nationalities you can see there most often. So let's start! Kinshasa is one of the biggest metropolitan areas in Africa, so when it comes to social life, there is a big range of cafes and restaurants there. There are a lot of nice and cozy places, but the prices are quite high. If you go to a restaurant, then minimum you will have to spend around $50 just for a drink and the main course. So going out there is expensive. But still, we went with my colleagues and friends to some cafes from time to time. And when it comes to other activities, there's really not so many. At the weekend, the majority of expats living in Kinshasa usually go to Chacha Bar, which is the most popular place in the city for foreign people. It has quite nice atmosphere and music for dancing. And basically that's it. It was surprising for me that in the city there are really no parks or green areas where you can go for a walk or make a picnic. Also, there is beautiful Congo River in the city, but there was no riverside where you can go and walk. All along the river they put a high fence closing it. I heard that it was done a couple of years ago because some construction works were planned there, but in the end nothing really happened and the territory was still closed. So you cannot walk at the river and get close to nature. Actually, I saw the Congo River only once when I went to a restaurant located on a ship right on the river. The restaurant and its parking place were the only spots where I could see the Congo River. I really missed movement in my life and the opportunity to go for a walk in the city. During the day it's usually very hot, so I walked only for some short distances. And it's interesting that in Kinshasa, as it is located right at the equator, the day and night are always equal, all year round. The sun always rises around 6 o'clock in the morning and sets around 6 o'clock in the evening, so it gets dark very early. And it's not advised for foreigners to walk in the streets at night for safety reasons. So I really missed active lifestyle and walking when living there. Of course, as Democratic Republic of the Congo is a very green and beautiful country, there are places where you can go, but they are outside of the city and it takes minimum one or two hours to get to the closest ones. There is a beautiful national park with safari tours where we went with my colleagues and I made a video about this trip. Also, there is another paradise-like place where you can swim, make barbecue and enjoy nature. It's about one hour drive from Kinshasa. There are also beautiful waterfalls and other natural places, but they are far from the city and you need to go there at least for two days. But as I worked six days a week and had only one day off, I couldn't do that. Also in the city, there are some nice swimming pools that are cool to visit. For example, this one was really gorgeous, but the thing is that you cannot rely on the weather in Kinshasa. If you have only one day off and it's raining on that day, you cannot go to a swimming pool. And it rains quite often, at least during the nine months of the rainy season. So in such weather, you can go only to some closed spaces by car, maybe to some cafe. I also wanted to do sports there, but I couldn't join any dance or other sports classes because they were usually in the evenings and I was working at that time. And subscription to the gym was very expensive. It cost $150 per month, which I thought was a little bit too much, because in Turkey, where I lived before, I paid less money for a year subscription to a sports club, where I could also join uh, different classes like yoga, pilates or zumba. When I came to Kinshasa, it was interesting for me to find out that there are a lot of foreigners living and working there. First of all, there is a big United Nations mission in Kinshasa, so there are a lot of people from all over the world working there. 
Also, the majority of big businesses in Kinshasa are owned by foreign people and they usually bring specialists or people for managing positions from their home countries. For example, there are big chains of supermarkets owned by Lebanese people or Indian people. There are also Chinese supermarkets. Also, there are a lot of cafes and restaurants, casinos, dry cleaners owned by foreign people. There were quite a lot of Turkish people working in construction companies. Also, as it used to be a colony of Belgium, there is a Belgian school where teachers are also foreigners. These are what I know and as far as I noticed, the biggest communities were of Lebanese people, Indian people and the Chinese. Experts in Kinshasa usually keep to their own communities. They become friends and hang out with other foreigners, go out to cafes or gather in the houses of friends, spending time together, making barbecues, playing games or doing some other activities. I had a Belgian friend that grew up and lived in Kinshasa all his life and he had only a couple of local friends. He said that most of the time, local people, when they communicate with foreigners, expect you to pay for them everywhere, they kind of expect you to be their sponsor. So usually there is no sincere friendship. That is why he said that he mostly had foreign friends. This is all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.